English class. Children, today we are going to study a play from Snapshot Supplementary Reader of Class 11 in English. So today, the name of the chapter which we are going to study is Mother's Day by J.B. Prisley. Children, do you love your mother? How much you love your mother? Did you ever say thank you to your mother for everything she has done for you? Did you ever say I love you to your mother? So, if not, you might have loved your mother but had never expressed your emotion or feelings to your mother by saying thank you or by saying I love you to your mother. So this is the right time if you had never tell your mother thank you and I love you, I care for you, I understand you. These kinds of words you can tell it today itself so that you can give at least a small gift to your mother that your mother really deserve. In every family, the mother plays a very important role and the mother is the one who will do everything for her husband, for her son, for her daughter, but never take care of herself. She will sacrifice her desire just because of the family. So there are many different kind of mother in this world maximum mother who are especially the housewife mother they are never recognized by the husband or by their children so this story written by jb prisley it is a drama with the help of this story we will came to know the importance of a mother the role of a mother in a family. So let's begin this play. The following play is a humorous portrayal of the status of the mother in the family. Let's read on to how Mrs. Pearson's family reacts when she tries to stand up for her own rights. Yes, this is a very interesting uh, chapter which we are going to study now. There are the major character in this particular uh, play. The number one is Mrs. Annie Pearson. Mrs. Annie Pearson is the protagonist of this particular play and uh, she is the mother of Doris and Cyril. So Mr. George Pearson is the husband of Annie Pearson and Miss Doris Pearson is the daughter. Mr. Cyril Pearson is the son and Mrs. Fitzgerald is the fortune teller as well as the neighbor of this family. So the action takes place in the living room of Mrs. Pearson's house in London suburb. So this is the present time. The scene. The living room of the Pearson family afternoon it is comfortably furnished. Much lived in room in a small suburb. Urban semi-detached villa if necessary only one door need to be used but it is better with two one up left leading to the front door and the stairs and the other in the right wall leading to the kitchen and the back door there can be a muslin cover window in the left wall and possibly one in the right wall the fireplace is assumed to be in the fourth wall, there is a settee up right, an armchair down left and one down right, a small table with two chairs on either side of it stands at the center. So this is the setup of the stage, the setup of the stage, how the stage is set up. When the curtain rises, it is an afternoon in early autumn. And the stage can be well lit. Mrs. Pearson at right and Mrs. Fitzgerald at left. Remember, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Pearson is the protagonist of this uh, play. Mrs. Fitzgerald is a fortune teller and the neighbor of 
Mrs. Pearson. So Mrs. Pearson is at the right and Mrs. Vizera at the left are sitting opposite each other at a small table on which there are two teacups and saucer and cards with which Mrs. Fitzgerald has been telling Mrs. Pearson's fortune. Mrs. Pearson is a pleasant but worried looking woman in her 40s. Mrs. Fitzgerald is older, heavier and a strong and sinister personality. She is smoking. It is very important that these two should have sharply contrasting voices. Mrs. Pearson speaking in a light, flurried short of tone, with a touch of suburban cockney perhaps, and Mrs. Fizera with a deep voice, rather iris perhaps. So in this particular description, this is a narration and uh, it is about the the personality and the setup of the stage. The personality of Mrs. Fizera that as it is mentioned that she is a very uh, worried looking woman in her 40s. While compared to Mrs. Fizera, Mrs. Fizera is uh, older than Mrs. Pearson but heavier and a strong sinister personality. But she is having that sinister personality. If we looked uh, at her, she is very bold. She is very uh, bold enough when compared to Mrs. Pearson. Now the dialogues between Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald is saying to Mrs. Pearson while collecting up the cards. She says, and that's all I can tell you, Mrs. Pearson could be a good fortune, could be a bad one. All de depends on yourself now. Make up your mind. And there it is. Mrs. Pearson is replying. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. I'm much obliged, I'm sure. It's wonderful having a real fortune teller living next door. Did you learn out east too? So with this conversation we came to know that Mrs. Fitzgerald, with the help of her fortune cards, she says that Mrs. Pearson is having a good fortune as well as that also. It is upon her whether to make it good or make it bad. So Mrs. Pearson is continuing her uh, saying, I did 12 years ahead of it, my old man rising to be Lieutenant Quartermaster. He learned a lot and I learned a lot more. But will you make up my mind now, Mrs. Pearson dear? Put your foot down once for all and be the mistress of your own house and the boss of your own family. With this conversation we came to know that Mrs. Pearson was really disturbed with her own family and she was uh, not happy with her own family. Mrs. Pearson smiling, that's easier said than done. Besides, I'm so fond of them even if they are so thoughtless and selfish, they don't mean to be. So here, how Mrs. Pearson replied to Mrs. Fitzgerald that their fa her family was so thoughtless and selfish. So these two terms he, she had mentioned for her own family that they were thoughtless and selfish. Okay, Mrs. Fitzgerald cutting in may not be but it would be better for them if they learn to treat you properly okay maybe they are thoughtless and selfish but it is you who has to be very bold enough to treat them properly okay so mrs pearson replied yes i suppose it would in a way mrs Fitzgerald is saying now no doubt about it at all 
who's the better for being spoiled? Grown man, lad or girl? Nobody. You think it does them good when you run after them all the time. Take their orders as, as if you were the servant in the house. Stay at home every night while they go out enjoying themselves. Never in all your life it's the ruin of them as well as you. Husband, sons, daughters should be taking notice of wife as mother, not giving them orders and treating them like dirt. And don't tell me you don't know what I mean, for I know more than you have told me. Mrs. Pearson is replying, I keep dropping a hint. Mrs. Fizera, hint? It's more than hints your family need, Mrs. Pearson. So, with the help of this conversation, we came to know that really there was a great, there is a need of change in the life of Mrs. Pearson because she was not treated well in her own family. Okay, so Mrs. Pearson is telling, I suppose it is, but I do hate any unpleasantness and it's so hard to know where to start. I keep making up my mind to have it out with them but somehow I don't know how to begin. She glanced at her watch at the clock. Oh, good gracious, look at the time, nothing ready and they will be home any minute and probably all in a hurry to go out again. So now in this dialogue we came to know that Mrs. Pearson is worried, very much worried about the time because the time is near when all the family members will come back and she has not ready anything at that particular time because she was talking to Mrs. Fizera. So she, she is very much afraid of being scolded by her daughter, son and husband also. You can imagine the situation of Mrs. Pearson in that in her own family. Okay, Mrs. Fizera loves telling. Let them wait and look after themselves for once. This is where your foot goes down. Start now. So here Mrs. Fizera is uh, giving suggestions to uh, Mrs. Pearson that it is you who had made them like that only. Okay. So she light a cigarette from the one and she had just finished. Mrs. Pearson is telling, Mrs. Fizera, I know you mean well. In fact, I agree with you, but I just can't and it's no use trying to make me. If I promise you, I would really have it out with them. I know I wouldn't be able to keep my promise. So here, Mrs. Pearson is trying to uh, give thanks or uh, trying to promise Mrs. Fizera that she will try her level best to, uh, to change her family. But she is not able to promise because she knows that she will be weakened, uh, she will be emotion and uh, she will keep on doing whatever they want. She will keep on doing that. So Mrs. Fizera, then let me do it. Mrs. Pearson, oh no thank you very much Mrs. Fizera, but that wouldn't do at all. It couldn't possibly be someone else. They would resent it at once and wouldn't listen. And really, I couldn't blame them. I know I ought to do it, but you see how it is. So, in this uh, dialogue, we came to know that she is really happy for Mrs. Fizeral, such a nice neighbor who wanted to help her. But in this case, she, uh, Mrs. Pearson is telling that she won't be able to help her because this this is different the matter is totally different mrs fizera you haven't got the idea because mrs fizera is a fortune teller and as well as she knows some kind of magic also so she, she said that in a cool way you haven't got the idea mrs pearson is uh, telling 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked me to let you do it. I thought that you asked me to let you do it. Means uh, she is thinking that Mrs. Fitzgerald will do it for Mrs. Pearson in the place of Mrs. Pearson. So Mrs. Pearson is telling, I did, but not as me, as you. So Mrs. Fitzgerald is telling that I will do, uh, I will help for you, but not as myself but as you so mrs Fis uh, pearson was not able to understand what she is saying but mrs pearson is saying but i don't understand you couldn't be me she's saying that i don't understand you couldn't be me how it is possible that in the place of uh, myself you will uh, tell my husband or tell my daughter or tell my son how to behave how will be Possible. So Mrs. Fitzgerald is telling, we change places or really bodies. You look like me, I look like you. So she is telling that we can exchange our nature, our whole body and everything. We will exchange and in the place of you, I will tell them how to behave properly. Okay, so isn't it very interesting? Okay, let's know if Mrs. Pearson is ready to accept this proposal, exchanging their personality. Mrs. Pearson is saying, but that's impossible. She is not believing that uh, they can exchange their uh, personality. Mrs. Vizera, how did you know? Ever tried it? How did you know? Did you try? Mrs. Pearson is saying, no, of course not. So Mrs. Fitzgerald is uh, replying in a very coolly manner. I have. Not for some time, but it still ought to work. One last no, but long enough for what we learn, what we want to do. Learn it out east, of course, where they are up to these tricks. Then she holds her hand out across the table keeping the secret in her mouth and say give me your hands so he she is telling that uh, she is ready to exchange the personality between mrs Fizera as well as mrs pearson so she says by saying all this she says give me your hand mrs pearson in a very doubtful manner well i don't know is it right she is very much frightened after exchanging the personality, so will it be for a, for a short period of time or will it be forever? She is very much uh, afraid of doing these kinds of challenges. So Mrs. Fizera, it's your only chance. Give me your hands and keep quiet a minute. Just don't think about anything. Then she take her hands. Now look at me. And she said that, look at me. And then uh, they stared each other, muttering. So what did they say? Astathadam, astathalam, astathalam dam mona. So this were the magic spell. They, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Fizera said, this little scene would be acted very carefully. So the coming scene, should be very uh, acted very carefully. We ought to assume that the personality changes bodies. After the spell has been spoken, both women are still grasping hands, go legs as if the life were out of them. Then both come to life with the personality of the other. Each must try to adopt the voice and mannerism of the other. So now Mrs. Pearson is bold and dominating and Mrs. Fizera is nervous and fluttering. So after the spell, the magic spell, these two ladies have been changed totally. Now the appearance of Mrs. Fizera, but actually she is Mrs. Pearson. And the appearance of Mrs. Pearson, but actually she is Mrs. Fizera. Remember my dear children, they have exchanged their characters okay 
So Mrs. Pearson, Mrs. Pearson now with Mrs. Fizera personality. Mrs. Pearson with Mrs. Fizera personality. See what I mean, dear. She noticed the cigarette. Here you don't want that. Then because she forgot that she is in another body. Mrs. Pearson is in another body. So she's telling that. See what I mean, dear. Here you don't want that. Snatches it and put it in her own mouth, puffing contentedly. So as you know that Mrs. Fizeral is fond of uh, smoking and drinking, and uh, now she is in the uh, body of uh, Mrs. Pearson. Mrs. Pearson never do smoking or drinking, but now Mrs. Pearson is. Uh, in the place of Mrs. Fizera, so we can see that the the attitude of Mrs. Pearson is totally changed. Mrs. Fizera now with Mrs. Pearson personality looks down at herself and sees that her body has changed and gave a scream of fright. So Mrs. Fizera with Mrs. Pearson's personality. Okay. Oh, it's happened, Mrs. Pearson. Of course, it happened very neat. Didn't know I had it in me, Mrs. Fizera. But whatever shall I do, Mrs. Fizera? George and the children can't see me like this, Mrs. Pearson. They aren't going to. That's the point. They will have to deal with only they won't know it. Okay. So here, still, Mrs. Pearson, the actual Mrs. Pearson, is afraid whether. The the husband and uh, her husband and her daughter and son will be uh, not able to adjust her because she is in the form of Mrs. Fitzgerald. So she is much worried now because she has changed. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, but what if we can change back? It would be terrible, Mrs. Pearson. Here, steady, Mrs. Pearson. If you had to leave my life, it wouldn't be so bad. You would have more fun as me than you had as you. So here, Mrs. Fitzgerald is saying to Mrs. Pearson that uh, because Mrs. Pearson was very afraid of being in the form of Mrs. Fitzgerald because she is very uh, afraid, and uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald is telling them, "Enjoy my life. My life is full of." Uh, happiness fun so enjoy your life as me so mrs fizera here yes but i don't want to be anyone else so she's saying that i don't want to be anybody else mrs pearson now saying now stop worrying it's easier changing back i can do it anytime we want so here mrs pearson is telling that uh, no need to worry I will change it whenever we want it. This is Fizera. Well, do it now. So she is telling that please do it now. So Mrs. Pearson, not likely I have got to deal with your family first. That's the idea, isn't it? Didn't know how to begin with them. You said, well, I will show you. So here Mrs. Pearson is telling, not actual Mrs. Pearson, but Mrs. Fizera is telling to Mrs. Pearson that uh, she is uh, taking this as a challenge to uh, bring the family of Mrs. Pearson into a trap. So Mrs. Fizera is saying, but what I am going to do? She is asking what I will do. Mrs. Pearson is telling, go into my house for a bit, there is nobody there, then pop up back and see how we are doing. You ought to enjoy it, but get off now before one of them comes. So she is telling that it's better you go to my home, stay there and uh, in a bit time you come back and see what's going on uh, and how I'm doing dealing with them. Mrs. Fitzgerald, yes I suppose that's best. You are sure it will be alright. So uh, with half-heartedly she is saying that uh, it Everything should be alright, Mrs. Pearson said. 
it will be wonderful now off you go dear then she is uh, asking the actual mrs pearson to go into, uh, into her yes to go back to the house of mrs fizera and stay there and wait for the best result now this is the scene the next scene mrs fizera crosses and hurries out to the door right left to herself mrs pearson smokes away lighting another cigarette and begins laying out the cards for patients on the table after a few moments doris pearson comes bursting in left she is a pretty girl in her early 20s who would be pleasant enough if she had not been spoiled so she is a very good girl but she is in her uh, early 20s she is a very pretty in her early 20s but if she is in a right track she would be very good so doris entered she says before she has taken anything in she says mom you will have to iron mask yellow silk i must wear it tonight and she is watching her uh, mother and she says what are you doing so mrs pearson now uses a ordinary voice but her manner is not fluttering and apologetic but cool and incisive so she's saying what do you think i am doing why washing the ceiling so she say uh, because doris has asked her mother what you are doing and mrs pearson mrs pearson the actual but in reality she is mrs fizera okay what is the habit of mrs fizera smoking and drinking so doris here is astonished but you are smoking for the first time she is uh, watching her mother smoking okay mrs pearson that's right dear no law against it is there she is saying that there is no law against smoking so doris but i thought you didn't smoke so as uh, Doris know about her mother that she never smokes so she says that you never smoke Mrs Pearson is replying then you thought wrong then she replied that if you had never seen me smoking then your thought is wrong so, so Doris is replying are we having tea in the kitchen after coming back from outside she is asking her mother are we having tea in the kitchen Mrs Pearson's reply have it where you like dear so in a very bold manner she is telling that have it wherever you like dear okay doris is now becoming angrily she says that do you mean it isn't ready because most of the time many time most of the time the mrs pearson will get ready everything before they come she will ready the tea she will ready the snack she will ready all everything else okay so now doris is getting angry because mrs pearson has not ready the tea for evening yours isn't i have had all i want might go out later and get a square meal at the clanton so she is telling that i had my own uh, tea if you want a cup of tea then you prepare yourself then she is telling that she will go out for square meal at clarendon so doris is really she was uh, in a shock because her mother never respond like this and she is amazed who might means she is asking who is going out mrs pearson is replying i might who would you think then doris is telling staring at her mother mom what's the matter with you she's surprised of how the behavior of her mother is totally change and she is telling that mom what's the matter with you mrs pearson is telling don't be silly doris it's not me that's being silly and i must say it's a bit much when i have been working hard all day and you can't even bother to get my 
tea ready did you hear what i said about my yellow silk okay so doris is expecting her mother that when she come back from her uh, from outside or from her working place her mother should uh, get ready the tea snacks and everything and she is all uh, repeating the same uh, order for her mother that did you hear what i said about my silk yellow on her entrance she had ordered her mother to iron her yellow silk dress mrs pearson is replying no don't you like it now i never did mrs uh, that doris of course i like it i'm going to wear it tonight so i wanted it iron so for iron the clothes also doris at her early 20s she is just ordering her mother to iron her dress okay she is ordering not requesting mom i'm just go, I, i'm uh, i will have to go to a dinner with so and so then please iron my dress she is not requesting the language she used how she has used the language she had not used please also okay so want it iron what do you think it's going to do iron itself then mrs pearson is responding to doris that she is not bother if it is iron or not and she will not iron her dress doris no you are going to iron it for me you always do so if her mother is always doing she is expecting that this time also her mother will iron her dress for her so mrs pearson is telling well this time i don't and don't talk rubbish to me about working hard i have a good idea how much you do doris pearson i put in twice the hours you do and get no wages nor thanks for it why are you going to be your, your yellow silk where are you going so here in voice of in a very hard voice mrs pearson is replying to her daughter what she says that she don't want to iron her dress this time and she is asking why you want that yellow silk dress and where she is going okay then with that doris replied out with charlie spence okay she so says that out with charlie spence so mrs pearson say why so doris is up doris is replying why why what's the matter with you why shouldn't i go with charlie spence if he asks me and i want to any objection go on you might as well tell me so now he is she is getting frustrated of the questions asked by her mother that why she wanted to go to uh why she wanted to go along with charlie spence and where she wanted to go so she is getting irritated mrs pearson is uh telling can't you find anybody anybody better i wouldn't be seeing death with charlie spence but teeth and half feet so how she had uh, explained about charlie spence she has described him as buck teeth and half witted so she says that according to mrs pearson that charlie spence is not at all a good boy not good looking and not even having good uh, sense or good behavior so she says that that boy is not good indirectly she, she is telling that that boy is not good for her doris he isn't mrs pearson is telling when i was your age i had have found somebody better than charlie spence or given myself up as a bad job so she is telling indirectly that the boy is not good at all for her and she should not go along with him for dinner or for something else or for tea so doris 
nearly in tears. Oh, shut up! So she is now uh, uh, very frustrated and she is a little bit hurt by the way her mother has told her that this boy is not at all good for him. Doris runs out. Mrs. Pearson chuckles and begins putting the car together. After a moment, Cyril Pearson enter left. He is a masculine counterpart of Doris. So after Doris, then uh, Cyril, the son of Mrs. Pearson, enter in the scene. So Cyril, hello mom, tea ready? Remember, when Doris came inside, she also asked for the tea. And when Cyril also entered in their house, Cyril also asked her mother if the tea is ready. Then Mrs. Pearson replied, no. Cyril, moving to the table and all, why not? Mrs. Pearson, coolly. I couldn't bother. Feeling off color or something? Mrs. Pearson, never felt better in my life. Cyril, what's the idea then? Mrs. Pearson, just a change. Cyril, well, snap out of it, ma, and get cracking, having too much time. So here, they are not bothering of how the mother is uh, facing or how the mother is doing all her hard work for them. Okay, so in this way, Mrs. Pearson here is telling that today she is not ready to do anything for them. She wanted a break, a change in her life. Cyril is about to go when Mrs. Pearson's voice checking. Mrs. Pearson, I have plenty of time. Cyril, yes, but I haven't got a busy night tonight. Did you put my things out? So she, uh, Cyril entered the room. He asked for his tea and now he is asking his mother whether his mother has put his things out and ready. Mrs. Pearson can't remember but I doubt it and she's saying that I can't remember whether you had uh, uh, told me in the morning and uh, I doubt whether I had did it or not. So Cyril now look when I asked you this morning you promised you said you would have to look through them first in the case there was any mending so you had promised in the morning that you will get ready everything for me and now you are saying that you are in doubt okay Mrs. Pearson says yes well now I decided I don't like mending yes morning I promised but now I decided I will uh, I don't like mending so Cyril is saying that's a nice way to talk what would happen if we all talk like that so Cyril is responding in a very frustrated manner then he said that this is a nice way to talk and let all talk like this every day Mrs. Pearson you all do talk like that if there's something at home you don't you don't want to do you don't do it if it's something at your work you get the union to the bar now all that's happened is that i have joined the movement so here she is responding that most of the time you all talk to me like this and when i talk to you then it is it's becoming so weird so Cyril is responding I don't get this mom what's going on she, he is not able to understand why her mother is doing like this that's all for today's class meet you in the next class we'll continue the second part in the next class